Now, how can the concept of heat vary from place to place? So, in order to understand this, we have to read the concepts in three different parts. One is the land, water. Land and water, how are they related? The next point is atmosphere. Third one is the balance of heat. Now, land and water. How does the heat play its effect on land and water? See, land gets heat very soon when compared to water. Water does not get heated very soon, but it gets heated gradually and gets cool gradually. Land gets heated very soon and at the same time gets cool also very soon. So, the, the places which are nearby to the water bodies do not get the effect of the temperatures because it has to heat the water later the land gets heated. So, when the land is not getting heated directly, the water will get heated automatically. So, when water gets heated, it takes long time for water to get heated and automatically by the time it sun sets down, the amount of heat will be reached off outside and it gets cool in the entire night. But land gets heated by the afternoon itself and in afternoon itself we feel extremely hot when compared to the lands which are nearby to the water bodies. This is one of the basic reason what the effect of land and water. Land has getting the capacity of heat very soon when compared to the water bodies. This is the factor which is playing behind the lands which are in the interior regions have more temperatures when compared to the lands which are closer by to the water bodies. Now, what is the other important factor which affects the temperature of the earth is the atmosphere. See, the amount of energy which we are getting in the form of solar radiation is either released back into the space or released into the atmosphere. And in the land, if its land is getting heated very soon, automatically the heat is entered into the air and the atmosphere. So, the atmosphere once it gets heated, it is passing on its heat to the clouds then it goes on to the other plants, trees or the next to the water bodies. In this way, the atmosphere also has very good impact on the heat or the heat or the solar energy has very good impact on the atmosphere as per the schedule of heating capacities of the lands. The atmosphere nearby to equator has more heat and humid nature when compared to the other places like which are away from the equator like the Tropic of Cancer regions or the above regions will have moderate heat in the atmosphere. This is a basic variation what we can understand from the relative energy of heat to the atmosphere. Then balance of the heat. How is the heat balanced then? Once a land gets heated, automatically the air gets heated, the air also gets heated, then the air becomes light weight or light pressure, then it becomes low pressure land it starts get attracted towards the high pressure lands or it attracts the high pressure winds. We have a air circulation methodology here which circulates the high pressure winds to low pressure winds. So, the water bodies which get heated very slowly and gradually have high pressure winds which are getting attracted towards the lands which are having the low pressure winds. This will attract them the winds from the wind, water body areas to the land areas and from here to water body areas. In this way, the process gets transformed and changed. So, we get the balance of heat. So, water will not get heat very soon. So, that cooling capacity comes to land. The heat of the land will be absorbed by the water bodies. In this way, the transformation will be done. In this way, the heat of the balance will be done from land to water bodies, from water bodies to land. In this way, it is a cyclic process which goes on continuously to have the balance of the heat. But in this process, we can study the atmosphere very carefully. You find a gas called carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a very important gas which generates excess heat in the atmosphere. This excess heat will be generated and spread over to all the various places and it moves on to generate more and more heat on the earth. And if earth is getting heated, it starts the forming of global warming effect.
so the carbon dioxide will make the cause for the global warming effect this global warming effect is nothing but the earths get heated continuously and because of the earths war heat we get the heat of the pole regions or the ice caps near the poles started to melt down when they start to melt down the flow of the water body starts to raise up or the levels of the water bodies gets raised up once the levels of the water bodies gets raised up automatically we get into the problematic situation that coastal areas get merged into the plants and the coastal people will be in trouble once this is done then if the entire ice is melted down we get floods and damage the entire humanity and once the floods are done the entire body of water gets connected into oceans and the water cannot be used for that for any purpose this will be caused into the other dangerous thing like it will be sown into the droughts and the famine conditions where no crop can be grown because the entire ice caps started to melt down and now there is no source for the rivers to generate the water so it could be a dangerous situation this is a international concern where un is working on this issue of global warming and asking all the developed and the non developed countries to come together and solve the problem in this way there are many other issues to be solved which are related with the earth sun and the temperature so now we shall discuss on the concept of temperature what is temperature as we have discussed earlier the relative capacity or the condition of a person or a place heat or cold which is measurable is known as temperature so in order to measure the temperature we are using now thermometer for us i think you all know what is thermometer thermometer is an instrument which is used to measure for us fever the normal human body temperature is 98.4 f foreign degrees is the normal temperature for us now in this as we all know the thermometer is able to measure the heat in our body whether we are having fever or not if you have fever what kind of medicine should be taken this all will be guided by doctor for us in this way we have various other issues that has to be addressed now moving on to the places where the highest and the lowest temperatures have been recorded in the world we have a place called azizia which is located in libya azizia is located a place in libya which is belonging to african continent in july 1922 the highest ever recorded temperature till now is 57.8 degrees degree celsius see we can understand that the highest boiling point on the earth is this water get boils at 100 degrees that is different here the land getting this much of heat which means it's a dry land there is no water body nearby for many hundreds of kilometers that is the meaning of this point here so azizia is a place where the highest temperature is recorded in july 1922 which is not till now and here is a far date now even today we don't have this much high temperatures as was during that period we have it and the lowest temperature is like vostok in antarctica in the same month of july in 1983 it is minus 89.2 is the lowest temperature so the normal lowest temperature for us is just 20 degrees or 18 degrees would be extremely cold for us in a country like, like india where indian climatic conditions support for us to live under comfortably under 30 to 35 degrees is a normal room temperature for us and 28 degrees also is an acceptable condition for us beyond 28 if it comes down we feel like it's not hot today it's cool but we are minus 89.2 degrees is extremely cold climatic condition where for zero degrees itself you get the condition of ice condition of the water the water turns into ice condition when it comes to zero degrees water turns to boiling condition when it reaches to 100 degrees celsius in this way we have the variations of relative heat and cold capacity now how to measure all these things in order to measure our human body temperature we have the thermometer in order to measure the places temperature we have to use the six minimum and maximum temperature using the graph this is a instrument which is used to study about the heatness of various places in order to get the proper idea of the various issues of heat